Let's talk about two ways to make money in comics even in a down market. This video was sparked by a recent massive success that I had actually combining these two strategies into one and I was thinking about doing a video and I thought I need to figure out a way to add value to both of these options to provide that to you guys, my viewers, because that's what this channel is all about, is about adding valuable information to the hobby of comic book collecting to make you a better investor, speculator, and comic book collector. So. These two uh, theories or, or, or strategies we've talked about before, but I'm going to add a little something to each one of them, so make sure you stay tuned and stick around for that. So the two things are comic book CPR and trades, and, th and I combined both of them uh, here in, in one scenario, and the way it started was I had a Silver Surfer number four in a 9.6, one of the nicest copies in the world that I traded to my friend Jerry. And Jerry brought me some books, we met up in person, and Jerry has a treasure trove of books that have not been pressed or cleaned that he got graded himself um, I think about 10 or 15 years ago. So this is kind of a double-edged sword because um, the books have not been pressed, but because of when they were graded, I believe they are overgraded or they have generous grades. And we'll get more into that here in just a sec. But one of the books in part of this trade for the Silver Surfer 4 was a Hulk 181 and a 9.2. And I could tell right off the bat that this thing just looks really nice, right? It looks nice for 9.2. I could also tell it has a lot of pressable defects in it. So the, the takeaway from it was, and I, I don't have a, a picture of it in the 9.2 case, but I do have a picture of it when we cracked it out with all the defects, and we'll go over those pictures here. Um, so it was a 9.2 that was overgraded, which means that if it was resubmitted according to today's standards, I think it would have got either an 8.5 or a 9.0. But it was overgraded, but it also had not been pressed and had pressable defects. So what are pressable defects? Pressable defects are non-color breaking defects uh, in a comic book that can be improved with pressing. And pressing is a non-restorative process that improves the appearance of comic books. So if it breaks color, there's nothing that a press can do about it. And so that would be like a crease or a spine tick or something like that. If it actually breaks the fiber of the book and you see like a white line underneath, that's a color breaking defect that cannot be improved. But this book had a lot of non-color breaking defects that could be improved. And so the math and the risk that I had to take was, if I crack this out and improve the defects, will it bump it enough to get a 9.4 or possibly even a 9.6 on its best day, like if it was a gift grade? And so that's what I decided to do. I decided, you know what, this thing just has, it's just too nice to just keep it as is. And I actually had a buyer lined up, my, my buddy Harvey, who we talked about many times on this uh, channel before, he was ready to trade for the 9.2. He was like, I'm fine with it as a 9.2 if you want to do the trade for that. You'll have to excuse that noise. There's some construction noise, which is actually music to my ears. It's my new, uh, my new shop being constructed here at the house, so we're just going to go right through the construction noise. So Harvey said, I'm willing to trade it for the 9.2 if you want to do that, or if you want to track, press, and resubmit it, and it comes back a higher grade, we can trade for that as well. So the value of the Hulk 181 in a 9.2 was about $9,000, and the value of a 9.4 was about uh, $12,500, so about a $3,500 bump from a 9.2 to a 9.4, and then of course, if you got the 9.6, it would be an even bigger bump than that, I think about another three or $4,000 or something like that. Um, and then worst case scenario, I thought in this case, it would come back the same grade, which would be, you know, all the cost of grading and shipping and everything like that, um, just to get the exact same grade. So the thing of value that I want to add about this part of CPR is access to my presser, my buddy Hugh over in Canada. I'll put a link down in the description to Hugh. You can find him on Instagram at Grade Bump Comics. And uh, he is, in my opinion, the best in the biz. And the reason is because he doesn't do it for a living. It's a side hustle for him. And so, um, he, you know, he only has, I think, one press and he takes a sweet time with that book. But the thing that's great about Hugh is you can trust him and if there's any chance that the book can be improved, he will find it. So I know when I send a book to Hugh that it has 100% the best possible chance of getting that grade bump, and if it doesn't get the grade bump after Hugh has worked on it, then it means there was no potential there in the first place. So 
That's why I love to use him. And if you have, you know, a, an expensive book, he would be a great resource for that because he's going to take his time with it. It might not be cheap and he might not be fast, but he's actually reasonable on both of those things. Uh, but it's worth it because you're going to get the absolute best possible results. Uh, not to say that there isn't other good pressers out there. I, I would really like to find someone who does it professionally, but if they do it professionally, they're busy. And if somebody's busy, you know, that's where quality can kind of uh, fall away. So I, I just think it's the perfect setup. Someone who does it as a side hustle, who's passionate about it, who you can trust, who gets good results. So let's take a look at the actual book. After we cracked it out, I'll put up on the screen what I'm looking at here. The whole pointing one in the top left corner, there was this crease that was non-color breaking or just maybe very, very, very faintly color breaking. If this was a harsher crease, that would limit this book to like an 8.5 at the most. It can have a, a, a crease like that is 8.5, maybe an 8.0 depending on you know uh, the length of that crease. But as you can see here, uh, after you pressed it, it's almost completely gone. I mean, just absolutely incredible results there. The next thing here is some very minor spine stress. So these are spine stress, it's not spine ticks, it doesn't break color, and as you can see, and man, they're gone. He completely removed uh, those from the side. Uh, there's another shot of the spine stress that's just from, you know, bending uh, on the board. And as you can see, completely gone. He got those things out. Uh, the top left corner of the back cover had just, you know, just a little bit of, you know, bending or folding down from it. And as you can see, nice sharp edge after he worked on it there. So this defect here could possibly be slab damage. CGC cases are really bad at protecting the actual books. So moving around in the case, that could have been from that, or it also could have been, you know, from a finger pulling it out of the bag. Um, but as you can see, it's basically completely gone. Um, and then the top back right corner, this was the thing that you just couldn't come completely out. You see the results there, it's definitely massively improved. Um, but you can't, there's certain defects that, man, you, you can only do the best you can without risking more damage to the book, you know, and, and uh, what he does here is he actually smooths it out with this little tool, um, but you can't push so hard that it breaks, you know, fibers in the book and stuff like that. So that is the absolute best that it can do. I'm sure he pressed this actually multiple, multiple times to get it to look like that. And then on the back cover spine, you can see a, uh, a spine stress line there that if this book was like a black cover or if it had a red cover on the back, that spine stress line probably would break color and get it a different grade. This just irks me to no end with CGC. Just because it's a white cover and it has that tick, it's the same defect, whether it's black cover or white cover. It's just that you can see it a lot better on a black cover, but it's the exact same thing. So like if you were to get like a, a, a microscope out and look at that spine tick, it breaks the fibers in the same way that it would on a black cover, and yet they're graded completely differently because of the way they look. So that's something that's always irked me. So as you can see, almost completely removed there, another back, left bottom corner, just some, some wear and stuff. So as you can see, this book was massively overgraded. And then of course there's that tear on the back uh, with, with the bend uh, that completely removed like the bend, but that tiny little tear remains. And there's the final result, the 9.4. We got the grade mark from a 9.2 to a 9.4. But as you can see, this book was massively overgraded at a 9.2. I think it's an, an 8.5 if it was just resubmitted as is. Maybe even, even lower than that. Because they were pressable defects and because I sent it to the best in the biz to get those defects out, uh, we did still end a net result of a great bump, $3,500 increase in value, and got the 9.4. So now, the second part of how to make money in a down market is trading comics. So the thing about trades is that they're very nuanced to each individual trade. No two trades are exactly alike. It depends on the people trading the books. It depends on the type of books. And there's a lot that goes into it. And at the end of the day, both parties making the trades need to be happy. And if that's the end result, then it is a successful trade. There is no like, you know, predetermined like amount of an increase in value that you can ask to trade for your books. 
it depends on the book. So say for example, with a Hulk 181 9.4, if I'm gonna trade a, a, a Hulk 181 9.4 for a bunch of modern books that are difficult to sell, that are all around $100, there's gonna be a massive markup on the value that I need in order to make it worth my time. And likewise, if it's a trade, just one book for one book, maybe you're a collector that wants to do a trade, that you have a Hulk 181, you're over it, you'd rather have you know, that Silver Surfer 4, maybe you do an even money trade, or maybe it's just a little bit off, but both parties are happy because they're getting the book that they actually want. It's very nuanced. Now, the thing that I wanna to do to add value to this component of the trades is a lot of people in the community shy away from trades because of the trust factor. If you're going to send your books to a complete stranger, especially if it's you know a very expensive book, a 12 or $15,000 book, how can you trust that this person's gonna send their books to you. This is where I'm gonna add value and throw my hat in the ring as a service I wanna to offer to the community is you can use Bryce Comics as a shipping waypoint to facilitate your trades. And I won't charge you anything, I'll just do it to be a resource to the community because I think having a healthy community benefits everyone. And so I'm happy to do it, but I think it would be a, a very minimal investment of my time. And also, I don't think a ton of people are gonna take me up on it, but feel free to. So what I mean by this is, say you wanted to facilitate this trade, say you had a Hulk 181 that you wanted to trade for 15 other books, right? But you're, you're hesitant because both parties don't know each other, nobody wants to get ripped off. Well, you can both send your books to me, to my shop at Bryce Comics, and I will check them in, make sure everything checks out, like, yep, Hulk 181, 9.4, it looks good, it's not damaged in the case, there's no cracks on the case, and yep, here's those, those 15 books that they told me that are supposed to get in the trade, and those books look good, there's no damages to the cases, and then I will ship them to the respective parties. So it just adds, it takes away the aspect of trade where you know, you're just totally rolling the dice that the other person is going to come through on their end. Um, and that's how I, you know, I just wanna offer that service to the community. If you're gonna do it, just reach out to me at bricecomics at gmail.com and just make it easy on me. Make it really easy. I mean, you guys have to pay for all the shipping and everything, but uh, I, I can help facilitate, you know, buying those shipping labels and stuff like that. You're just gonna have to pay for it. And then make sure that the list and that the trade is super clear and super simple so I can open both boxes, make sure everything's there, the addresses uh, that I need to ship them to, and boom, we're on our way. I mean, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and, and it's a done deal. So, a little uh, bit of info about how to use trades to your benefit. So, if you have a book that is highly desirable, like a Hulk 181 or an Amazing Fantasy 15, you could, if you have a little bit of hustle, and here's the, the catch to how to make trades make sense and to be profitable even in a down market is got to have a little bit of hustle. You got to not be afraid of a little bit of work. You got to be able to list books and ship books and, and do that whole side of it because if you can do that, it's a great way to add value. Here's an example, all right? Let's say you have an Amazing Fantasy 15 and it's a 2.0 and say it's worth about $20,000 and you'd like to get an upgrade. You'd like a 2.5 or maybe even a 3.0. There's a lot of people in this community that are chomping at the bit that would love to trade their collection for an AF15 2.0. They're, they're willing to add a lot of extra value because of the convenience of a trade, because of the fact that it's easier to amass you know, two or three boxes of mid-level tiers than it is to save up 20 grand and just spend $20,000 on a single comic. And so in that case, if you have a $20,000 AF15, somebody might be willing to trade you 26,000 in value, a, a hefty increase in value, but because of what it is, they're willing to do it. And if they are, then nobody is getting screwed in this scenario. If both parties are happy with it, then it's a great trade. You know, the person trading more value has to be okay with that. And so the catch there is, you know, if you trade your AF15 2.0 for $26,000 in books, you have to have a platform to be able to move them. The best thing would be Instagram because there's no fees on Instagram. And um, and you can turn that uh, 20, $20,000 AF15 into $26,000 worth of books. And then if you factor in fees and offering them at a good price to move them quickly, say you get out of it like $23,000 in actual cash. Now you have $23,000, you're a lot closer to getting that 2.5 
or that 3.0 and maybe you do it a couple times and the next thing you know if you get good at doing these trades and you get good at you know building these platforms on eBay or Instagram to trade and sell books um, and you have the time you can like increase the value of your collection without putting any more money into your collection just using the equity and your ingenuity and your hustle to turn what you already have into better copies of those things or a bigger collection uh, essentially that's what i did with my collection that turned it into my business now it's my career and you know it, it there's opportunity everywhere. And that's, what's so, and that's what's so exciting about this hobby. And one of the things that's so fulfilling about it is if you can figure out a way to make this side hustle work for itself, make your books work for itself and watch your collection grow. It's incredibly fulfilling, especially making these new connections and these new relationships with new collectors. Because there's definitely several different ways to go about flipping books and being a hustler. There's a lot of people that are just absolute assholes right that are just trying to rip anyone off that they can to get more money so they can buy more books right that's one strategy that a lot of people in this hobby do i mean this hobby is full of assholes that aren't interested in you know being a good person or you know looking out for the fellow collector that kind of thing that's a strategy that a lot of people use or you can do it where you know you care about people you want to be fair and do it in a way where you establish relationships along the way that would be my recommendation you have a lot more fun that way you sleep better at night and you make some new friends in the process so then i traded the 9.4 hulk to harvey for about fifteen thousand dollars worth of books so that was the increase in value. I think it was worth somewhere around $12,000. I traded it for $15,000 worth of books. Harvey's super happy. He gets to unload you know, some more books and stuff that he can live without. He gets a super nice copy of Hulk 181. And now the end result, if I were to sell that $15,000, let's say I can turn it into like $13,500 after discounts and fees and offering good deals on books. If I walk away with $13,500, now I took the book that I got $9,000 in trade value for the original book and turned it into $13,500 cash. All right, so let's take a look at the $15,000 worth of books that we got from Harvey. You're in for a treat, as always with Harvey, always has you know the coolest, high grade, amazing stuff. So let's head over to the shop and take a look at the $15,000 worth of books. All right, you guys, get ready for some of that Harvey, Chloe's comic swag goodness, starting it off with a Banger, Amazing Spider-Man 194, the first appearance of the Black Hat 9.8 White Pages. Awesome book. Fear number 19, the first appearance of Howard the Duck in a 9.4, uh, signed by Val Mayerick, uh, who was on the art for this issue. Really cool signature there for Val as well. Captain America number 100, the first issue in this series. Uh, it was the, the numbering is continued from Tales of Suspense number 99. Batman number 227 in a 9.0. Uh, Detective Comics number 31 homage. Always an incredibly difficult book to sell when it comes in. I would love this book in like a 9.6 or something, but man, it just there is just never a good deal for this book in those super high grades. It's just, this is one of those books that has, I believe, really retained value even through the comic book correction in those high grades. I'll have to take a look and make sure that that's correct. Star Wars number 42 in a 9.8 white pages. First comic book appearance of Boba Fett. Of course, he first appears for the first time, which I have on the website right now, Marvel Super uh, Special number 16. It's a magazine form. Spider-Man Noir number one in a 9.8. Free comic book day, One Punch Man. Young Marcus is drooling over this book right now, trying to figure out what we're gonna do about this. Uh, Spawn number one in 9.8 white pages, newsstand edition, first appearance of Spawn. Adam's Family number one in an 8.0 with white pages, uh, first appearance of Wednesday and others. Um, obviously this book saw a huge surge in popularity uh, around that show Wednesday, which I really enjoyed. Leave a note in the comments if you enjoyed that show Wednesday on Netflix. Dragon's Lair number one in a 9.8 from 2003. Darkwing Duck number one. This is the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive from 2010. 
Iron Fist number eight, the first appearance of Chaka, and just an awesome John Byrne cover. I have another, um, I believe it's John Byrne in my personal collection of these Power Man and Iron Fist covers, I think are just really striking and well done. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number one from 1988, the first comic book appearance of Krang, Bebop, and Rocksteady. Dark Knight's Metal number three, the Matina Virgin edition. Usagi Yojimbo number one in a 9.8. The first Usagi Yojimbo in his own title, first solo series from Fantagraphics, 1987. Wraparound cover, what a cool collectible that is right there. Spider-Man number one from 2016. This is the Addy Granov hip-hop variant, homaging Nas's album cover, um, Illmatic, and it's double signed by Addy Granov and Sarah Pichelli. Miles Morales, Ultimate Spider-Man number two. This is the incentive variant, and one you don't see all the time, signed by Amy Reader. And what I really like about this is right here on this screen, is this is part of the cover amy reader signature and then uh her actual signature because the signature series right above it i think that looks really cool ultimate spider-man number one and 9.8 second miles morales origin of miles morales first ultimate prowler classic cover amazing collectible and spectacular spider-man number 158 9.8 white pages uh spider-man gains the powers cosmic so there you have it guys two ways to make money in comics even in a down market i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it added value to your collecting experience if it did please consider hitting subscribe in so doing it will enter you to win a free slab we do a free slab giveaway here on the youtube channel each and every month and check out bricecomics.com use code collect 10 for 10 percent off all in stock items including uh, most of the books that you see here in this video. Follow me over on Whatnot, link down in the description for $15 towards your first purchase on Whatnot. I'm getting some shows ready. We took a little break because of the mystery box and uh, you know just needing to take a break, but we'll be back on Whatnot soon. And lastly, follow me on Instagram for Trades for Grails and other fresh content over there. Thanks as always for sticking with me to the end of the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.